Following the declaration of the two pixel variables, the code on your right calls the getWidth method on the incoming picture to get and store half the width of that picture. That value is stored in a local variable which is a primitive variable of type int named midpoint. Then again, the code calls the getWidth method to get and save the actual width of the picture in a local primitive variable named width of type int. This code computes and saves the width and the horizontal midpoint of the image. These values will be needed as we mirror the left quadrant into the the left upper quadrant into the right upper quadrant. The run method continues with the code now showing on the right of your screen. This code uses a pair of nested conventional for loops to copy the pixel colors on the left side of the midpoint to corresponding mirror image pixels on the right side of the midpoint. The outer loop in this code iterates down through each of the rows in the top half of the image. The inner loop iterates across the left half of each row, copying the colors of the pixels from the left half to the corresponding mirror image pixels on the right half. When the nested for loops terminate, the code returns a reference to the modified picture object. As you saw earlier, that reference is assigned to a variable named PIX. Now let's get back to the last statement in the bottom right of your screen. I told you earlier that I would have more to say about the process of storing the return value from the method name mirror upper quads in the local variable named picks. Actually returning and storing a reference to the modified picture in listing 3 is superfluous and it is unnecessary. The code in listing 3 on the bottom of your screen already has a reference to the picture. That reference doesn't change because the object to which it refers has been modified. However, I prefer this programming style because I consider it to be more self-documenting. Returning now to the run method, the code on the bottom half of your screen, on the right, calls the method named M-I-R-R-O-R-H-O-R-I-Z for the purpose of mirroring the top half of the image into the bottom half. I will explain that method shortly. In the meantime, here is a review question for you. What is the name of a method that you can call on a picture object to draw text on the image? Of course, the answer to that question is that the method is named add message. The code in the bottom right of your screen 
calls the add method message to display some text near the upper left corner of the image as shown here right there here's another review question for you what method other than the explore method does Erickson's picture class provide for use in displaying the picture the explore method can be used to display a copy of the picture object in an object of type picture explorer the picture explorer object as you already know provides certain features that allow you to explore for the color values belonging to individual pixels in the picture in addition Erickson's class provides a method named show that can be used to display the actual picture object as opposed to displaying a copy of the picture object the show method does not provide the capability for you to explore the colors of individual pixels in the image so what are some of the differences between the behavior of the show method and the explore method well I just got through explaining that the explore method makes it possible to interactively zoom and explore the colors in the individual pixels of the image the show method on the other hand does not provide that capability the code in the bottom right on your screen calls the explore method to display a copy of the modified image as shown here finally the code on the bottom right of your screen returns a copy of a reference to the modified picture object this reference is saved in the variable name PIC back in the main method that we will take a look at shortly back in the main method on the right of your screen the variable named PIC which now contains a reference to the modified image is passed to the print line method this causes the second line of text that you will see here to be displayed on the command line screen I still owe you an explanation of the method named mirror H-O-R-I-Z if you haven't already guessed the name of that method is an abbreviation for mirror horizontal the method named mirror H-O-R-I-Z is now showing in its entirety on the right of your screen this method mirrors the top half of the picture into the bottom half recall that we have already mirrored the upper left quadrant of the picture into the upper right quadrant now when we call this method or when this method is called to mirror the top half into the bottom half we will have achieved the specifications that I described earlier the code on the 
right of your screen is very similar to the code in the method named mirror upper quads that I explained earlier. If you understood that explanation, you should have no difficulty understanding the code now showing on the right side of your screen. Therefore, it shouldn't be necessary for me to provide a detailed explanation of the code now on the right of your screen. The last line in the code on the right of your screen signals the end of the class named Prob01Runner. So let's summarize what you learned in this lecture. You learned how to use nested for loops to process pixels on a row and column basis. That concludes lecture number six titled Using Nested Loops to Process Pixels in which you learned how to use nested for loops to process pixels on a row and column basis. You can learn more about this topic by visiting my website at www.dickbaldwin.com.